try to introduce uh, another speaker, uh, Alex Chen. Uh, he is from uh, Forms HK. So uh, this morning we have um, uh, HSBC talk about APEC, and then uh, Greg talk about mainland China. Then we ha we have uh, uh, the European culture, and Alex one is talking about the uh, the open banking. And then the company is actually uh, focused and have an edge on the Greater Bay Area. So we do have a very good cover which uh, this morning. So Alex, so you can try to share your screen and then see if this is okay. Yeah. Do you see my screen now? And um, not yet. Uh, mm -hmm. So you 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 need to try to. I have um, requested already. The, do you see my and, video? Mm, no, I I can see your videos and I can I can hear you, but uh, I think you need to share the screen, uh, the first button, that like last time. Okay. Yeah. 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 Let me try again. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So have you clicked that? Yes. Let's try. Okay. Okay, thank you. So maybe let me have some background. So uh, Alex uh, will be talking about beyond open banking, talking about the open innovation and open business here. Right. But um, let me try again. Seems like it doesn't work. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, so. Yeah, uh, maybe you can you try to uh, are you clicking the share your screen button, but this is not responsive or yes, it, it keeps popping up um um the Chrome setting window. So Chrome setting. So is it the same same uh permission that uh we, we did last time? Yes, you yes. Set? yeah. So is it okay yeah. to to share the screen by your side and then I can um, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yep. I, I can. I can also help that. So yep. you you share. You right. send us. Uh, so is it the one that you shared me before? Is that? Um, I sent you CC or this this morning. Oh, CC. Uh, but uh, can can you forward that to to me? So, mm -hmm. uh, so sorry, sorry, audience. So we we may need to have a uh, another uh, few minute wait. Sorry for that. So yeah. We got we got some, quite some new speakers uh, joining the hotline, so uh, maybe there's some some um, le this, uh, learning curve here. So sorry for that. So Alex, uh, you you share uh, share the email to me. Right. Uh, okay. You should be now on the way. Okay. Okay. So I can help you to 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 project like that. Uh, Sorry for that. So you you sent? Yes. Still waiting. Um uh, Alex, maybe during during the wait, maybe can you try to uh, refresh your 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 browser, and then see whether you can share the screen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, okay, I got that. So maybe um, I will also have to. I'm back again. Let me. Okay, so so uh, can you try to to share the slide and then see whether it is okay? If no, I can help you uh, share from my side. Right. I've tried to share a couple of times, but uh, still <laughs> so not. Okay. Okay. So no, let me do that. Sorry. Thank you. Let 
，那举一名，这，这 Patrick， do you see my screen now? The the PowerPoint slides. Am I sharing my slides now? So can you hear me? Yes. Do you hear me? Yeah. Uh, okay. Let, let me let me try. Okay. okay. Yeah. I, I got that. So it take a while. So okay. Let me share the screen here. So um. Yeah. Uh, Alex, so, we we can see your screen. We can see your screen, Alex. Okay. Uh, I just shared. Oh, oh, oh. So is that um? Yeah. You you have okay. to click uh, on the I, presentation. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I I, I hide my I hide that. So so do I need to yeah. share my? Alex, try to open the presentation as Patrick did. Yes. Uh, that, that, that's mine. How about now? Do you see my, my PowerPoint screen show? No, we can no. see the tab where you are. Yeah. Yes. OK, so Patrick, you, yeah, you can... I, I can help Alex. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So uh, Alex, I will... Stop, I will, stop, I will sharing. Yeah. stop sharing, Alex, if you can. Thank you okay. very much. OK. Alex, you can keep going. Okay. So is it okay for me to start now? Hello? Yeah, yeah, you can start. You can start the, sorry, the I, um, And sorry for the delay, uh, even though we have done some rehearsal before. Um, and thanks, Patrick, for the invitation and introduction. Um, hello, all. I'm Alex. Um, it's my big honor and pleasure to speak to you all today about APIs. So throughout the day, I'm sure you will hear a lot about the promising future of API technology and API economy from the other peer distinguished speakers. But um, let me tell you, I'll provide you with a very different perspective. So stay tuned for the next um, maybe 10 or uh, 15 minutes. I have to get this shot if you're interested to know what it is about. So next page, please, uh, Patrick. So um, I'll first give you a very brief introduction about Farms Hong Kong, who we are and what we do. And then we will start by doing a reality check together about today's open banking landscape. And then next page, the agenda page. Yeah. After that, we will analyze what is actually hindering the development of open banking. And finally, I will share two recommendations for banks to make open banking a success. So next page, please. Um, so what is FORMS and why FORMS is being invited to speak today at API Day? So um, FORMS is a cross-border fintech thought leader, incubator, and enabler. We are listed in Shenzhen with market cap more than 6 billion RMB. We specialize in the banking and finance industry. Today, we have more than 2,300 fintech consultants, UI UX designers, solution architects and developers. Although we are listed in Shenzhen and headquartered in Shenzhen, more than 60% of our business actually comes from Hong Kong and overseas location. So next please. So what exactly do we do? We pride ourselves to be the trusted advisor and enabler to help establish banks to change the bank. We help virtual banks to build the bank and we even help central banks to shape the future of money. So let me take the chance to share our latest exciting news with you. Next page, please. Forms in partnership with Consensus and PwC are just being appointed by Hong Kong MA to deliver the highly strategic central bank digital currency project called Project in Interon Nine Rock Phase Two. So with all that, helping the, the banks to change the transform. Um, we actually heavily, heavily rely on APIs to do all the design and implementation. So next page. So it's probably enough with our TV commercial time. Let's then start our API discussion. For each and every digital banking strategy paper, including those consultancy reports our company is being paid to deliver. Open banking, APIs, and microservices become the de facto strategic element in both the blueprint and roadmap recommendation. 
Next. And likewise, many of the global leading research and consulting firms keep providing very optimistic and encouraging forecasts about open banking adoption and potential market size. But hold on a minute. Let's do a reality check by simply asking yourself a question. Next. So be honest. Do you actually feel the impact as a customer or as a bank as a result of open banking? Yet there are banking account aggregators, there are banking offered comparison app and website. There are use cases of supermarket allowing customers to pay with credit card bonus points. But does it really make an impact on you? Does it really matter about your choice of bank? Or does it really deliver tangible growth opportunities for banks? As the firm believer in API technology and API economy, I regret to say there, are, there seems to be a very big gap between the reality and those very sexy forecasts. The next. So what actually goes wrong? Is it due to technology constraints? Is it due to regulatory challenges? Or is it simply because the market is not ready? I don't think so. We have so many proven API and microservices technologies and solutions out there. Hong Kong MA, the local regulator, and many other regulators in other locations and regions are all encouraging and facilitating banks to adopt APIs. The market and customers are looking forward to the banking equivalent of Airbnb, hotel.com type of client services and client experiences. So what's the problem? To answer that question, let's put on the first principle thinking hat to deep dive into the very, very fundamental. The so next page. When many people, including bankers, think about open banking, they think about exposing the application programming interfaces of their product systems to external parties. Yes, this is very essential, but is this something what customers want? Customers do not need the API per se, and customers actually don't want the banking products either. The next page. Think about it. Do we indeed need a plastic card to buy things? Definitely not. We only want to enjoy shopping or simply to buy things that we need. Payment is a very necessary evil here. If there is a choice, I think customers would rather make the payment process invisible as long as it's being done in a secure manner. Next. And similarly, do we need a mortgage loan? No, we only want to have a dream house. Financing is again a necessary and oftentimes very clumsy evil along the home buying journey. So the next two pages, one by one, please. The same applies to other banking products like personal loans and trade finance. And the next page. So having the understanding is very important for us to iron out the underlying obstacles that hinder the development of open banking. So next. Now let me go into the, very two, the two very specific problems and the corresponding solutions to resolve them. First, I will argue that the number one problem actually lies with the notion of open banking itself. It is because the word banking drives people to center their thinking around the bank or more specifically, banking products and services. By putting our first principle thinking hat again, we should not focus, we should put our primary focus on the customer journey. We should make the journey enjoyable by making the banking elements frictionless and even sometimes invisible. So next page. Let me use a home buyer's dream house realization journey as an example. The journey starts with the desire to own, to own a dream house. It then goes through the steps like identifying the right property with the right location, the right budget, and the sense of living style. So next. And next bit, please. please. 
Imagine if people can now see the property of a demo flat online without the hassle of physically going there, dealing with clouds of property agents, or even, even squeezing into the queue there amid the risk of COVID-19. Um, the next page, please. Yeah, and then the next one. So we have all the online experiences that can make the property buying journey very enjoyable and desirable. So the next page. And then after deciding on the desired apartment, simply place the deposit to secure the selection on the same app just with a, a few clicks. Next. Next. If the home buyer needs financing, the same app can link up among all the necessary stakeholders, like the bank, the insurer, and the land registry, etc., to make the mortgage loan application, approval, and drawdown process frictionless. All can be done possible by means of APIs. Next. And next. The journey needs not to stop here. The happy dream home realization journey can then proceed to interior design, furniture, and home appliances purchase. Many home buyers will welcome the offer of an installment loan at the point of online checkout, as long as the process is seamless. The journey can go on and on, including the convenience of ordering door-to-door -door mini storage service on an app to free up your very expensive home space, or even booking clubhouse facilities to enjoy partying with family and friends. All the above is just an example to illustrate the importance of putting the customer in the center, not the bank. There are numerous opportunities for banks to capture throughout the whole journey. It's the customer's desirable journey that matters. In order to exploit the unlimited business potential provided by API economy, banks should really be bold enough to give up the idea of putting the banking product as the center of gravity, but really to consider partnering with the key stakeholders along the customer journey of their target persona. So next. Secondly, banks should not position API initiative as an innovation project. It, it should be positioned and managed like a new line of business. Next. It's very typical that um, open banking initiatives are taken up by either the IT department, digital banking or innovation team, or even being scattered around um, across various lines of business. Unfortunately, the reality, the reality tells us that this is not a very effective way. Open banking is a new business model. When we look at people like WeBank in mainland China, um, the business model is no more about the bank and the customers. The business model is really about ecosystem partnership. The, the business model is really talking about how to make banking frictionless and visible behind the major stakeholders and partners. It should be driven by the business. IT department and innovation team are not being empowered to mobilize business and operation organizations to take part to join the overcome challenges. If banks are determined to make the open banking initiative a success, it should be being managed and run like a business, not an innovation trial or POC anymore. Next, please. A new line of business, tentatively known as open business, should be established alongside personal banking, credit card, and other businesses like corporate banking. It should be assigned resources, budget, and being empowered to run like a business, that is open business. Next, please. So here we are advocating um, the banks to really think about to change from the open banking mindset to the open business mindset. By that, I mean maximizing the bank's value to foster a very tight partnership and of course business partnership with ecosystem partners to fulfill the selected customer journeys. The banks, um, customer base, both the retail and commercial banking customer base, the bank's payment, credit card, credit, and other financial capabilities, together with bank's IT capability, are very, very highly strategic and valuable.
to the ecosystem partners. The open business LOB line of business should own the whole stack from partnership management, product manufacturing, API development, and operation. Um, you may, it may be to your surprise, many other enterprises in other industries, when it comes to the API or IT capability, they are in fact not as strong as the banks. So making use of the bank's very strong and unique IT capability is in a way helping the partners to enable them to do, to engage in the API economy. So engage and enable your partners. This is a new service model uh, between the banks and your partners. That is, you co-create a product with your partners. You even co-develop the APIs with your partners and sometimes for your partners. You can then bargain exclusively for a certain period of time to partner with your own bank before the product gets being adopted. So take control of your client experiences and your client engagement. Along the journey, try your best to make sense out of the data that you have collected. You should, you should also tailor made the customer journey for your, for your target persona. So ladies and gentlemen, I think there are two major um, takeaways here. One is really to think beyond banking. Think about this is a new business model, the API economy. And from the organization perspective, um, the open banking initiative shouldn't be scattered around different departments, including IT and innovation team. It should be a new line of business to drive the business to a success. So next page. So the main question for me to you guys, especially the banks, is are you ready? So that concludes my sharing today. Hopefully I can also catch up some gap in terms of the timing. Okay, so let me let me try to quickly see whether there's some, some question. Um, okay, let me check that. So yeah, maybe maybe a quick one, maybe a quick one. So I think uh, uh, Alex, you, you share some interesting um, 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 point of view that uh, I'm also quite curious. So you mentioned about uh, open business to be a new line of business, but uh, also from also my personal uh, point, uh, experience as well. Uh, typically for, for those at that bridge bank, they do have uh, a very well at that bridge uh, line of business. And if it, it seems that it's very difficult for them to spread it out, or maybe the new line of business will have many calls over with the existing uh, line of business as well. And then they, there may be some give and take, maybe uh, affecting some of their uh, revenue or positioning. So how how will you recommend maybe from the bank's perspective or maybe from the, the API partner perspective, how, uh, what, what is your your your, uh, your your thoughts about this kind of uh, maybe potential conflict of interest, et cetera? Okay, I think there are two major thoughts here. One, um, I think most of the banks have been trying to do some kind of open banking initiative in the past two to three years. So the latest conversations between firms and, and some of the CEOs of the banks is um, when we ask them, what are you doing right now? Has, how's your status and progress? They said, we are um, having meetings, meetings and meetings, internal meetings and meetings with the department. So in a way, I think um, the, the banks are feeling the pain that they're wasting a lot of resources and time. So um, I think now they should have them the very big motivation to, to do something more impactful. Um, I understand that having a new line of business is a very big um, challenge to be overcome. But I think for all those banks who have spent so much effort and time and actually investment on all those different kind of, um, I mean, um, prototypes and POCs should be gone. This is one. And then the second one is, I, we actually can see some tangible business values coming from the new business model. Um, so say, for example, we see um, the open, I, open API collaboration between banks and supermarkets. We see um, some banks collaboration with some um, food and restaurant recommendation website. I think those are very tangible business values that can justify um, how and why banks should make that kind of investment. And th that should be a delta gain for the banks instead of cannibalizing the banks today's um, existing customer base or revenue. Mm, okay, got I got your uh, got your points. So uh, Alex, thanks for your time. And I, um, there is another one question. See whether I can uh, pick it as well because it's uh, having lunch. So um, it would be uh, let's try that. Okay, so some someone is asking about the Belt and Road Initiative and the maybe the, the the relationship with the API. So do you have any thoughts about the API and also the Trilers uh, Belt Belt and Road Initiative uh, yeah. on that one? 
Right. I think API provides a very good um, platform for business to go beyond borders. I think this is a very um, appealing value that can bring to the table. And the good thing is along the Belt and Road countries, especially in Southeast Asia, including as I know today we have a lot of audience in, in, in Singapore and some other countries like Thailand. I think um, the momentum over there, um, um, the banks and um, the industry and the regulators and even the national governments themselves are driving a lot of collaboration um, between countries. Um, I think that's what we're experiencing. I can give you one example in Thailand. Um, there is a Thailand national policy and agenda called Thailand 4.0. So under that, um, they, they are having a big agenda talking about um, the invisible banking agenda. That, that means they are asking the banks to partner with different partners, even in different countries, to make the overall customer journey and the business model um, a very innovative one. So we are now seeing a, a very big progress and momentum um, happening over there. Okay, I'll explain for our time. So um, yeah, I think this conclude our uh, sections uh, before lunch. So thanks again for Alex's uh, time, and then maybe we will have uh, some offline check. I do have other questions uh, based on your your presentation actually. So uh, thanks again. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, everyone, so bye bye. So